Well, hi, this is Custom Works, and I'm Clint Allen. Today we're going to be talking about white smoke from your 7.3 Power Stroke. Information that you can only get on this channel right here. If you're just joining us or you're new to the community here, you can go down into the description and I've made it very easy for everybody to find our videos. You'll have a complete list of sensor videos that are almost finished. You'll have our quick tech talk list. You'll have other videos that uh, will very much interest you. This is where we see problems and we explain problems. Once again, only here. So don't be afraid to join and let's move on. So white smoke from your 7.3 power stroke. Let's explain real quick white smoke. Not gonna get real technical here, but basically white smoke is something that happens on a diesel engine when in the combustion chamber something is not getting fully burnt and carbonized and comes out through the exhaust as a white steam, a white smoke, even a gray smoke. First thing that we want to consider is your tuner. Do you have a tuner on this vehicle? Turn the tune off, get it back to the factory settings and see if the smoke goes away that way. It is not completely uncommon for tuners to go bad. Uh, doesn't make a difference if you spent $500 for a tuner, $1,000 for a tuner, including the tunes, or you got one of the cheap eBay or Amazon models that are a couple hundred bucks. These tuners can go bad over time and sending bad information into your computer and IDM and causing an overfueling issue or many other issues, screwing up sensors, stuff like that, causing white smoke, whether it's just a little bit or a lot. But in most cases, white smoke is one of those danger, danger, stop now situations. And let's take a first look at air and oxygen. Do you have a clogged air filter? When's the last time that you checked your air filter? These are one of the common items where not enough air is drawn into the cylinder and you would have a excessive amount of diesel fuel coming in and the computer is not doing its job in regulating that and you would end up with white smoke. Rare, but it does happen. Clogged CCV. If you still have the CCV hooked up in accordance to the way the factory designed it and the emission Nazis required, check to see if that filter that is sitting on the driver's side of the valve cover gasket is not clogged off, not over oiled because it fills up with oil and contaminants over time and then it slowly starts closing itself off. Those are also one of the reasons why this can happen. Next, as we move up, let's talk about the turbo. The turbo compressor wheel, pull off that plastic air intake, take a look-see down inside. Is it filled up with oil? Has it been dusted? Is it chipped up? Is it not forcing enough air through? the air-to-air -air system or in the OBS is it not just basically passing enough into the intake in order to have that nice air to fuel ratio um, basically from 1996 all the way up to 2003 the the, the 7.3 tuning the you know from the factory itself was dedicated with less fueling and more air. So there's always more air in that cylinder. And once you have that situation where there's not enough air going in and there's too much fueling going on and the cylinders are not getting hot enough, then you'll end up having 
white smoke passing through your uh, exhaust system and uh, all of a sudden you know you, you have an issue there. Number two on that turbo uh, pull off the exhaust side and you don't have to pull it off too far and you'll see oil actually inside of the exhaust tube and inside the impeller side of the exhaust side of that turbo. If it's all gummed up full of oil you've got yourself a situation where the turbo seals are burnt out. Got to get the turbo pulled out and get the turbo rebuilt. If your turbo is good let's go and check all the connectors that are involved. Check all the connections starting from right where the turbo leads off to the H pipe or X pipe or manifold intake whatever you want to call it but anyway start checking all of the connections all the way through the air to air all the way up back through to the back side where it comes back into that X pipe H pipe and including and don't rule out the fact of the two connectors that are right on the heads themselves where the air intake is leading into those over time can also lose their seals causing that off balance rare but sometimes it does happen moving on to coolant now low excessive temperature of the motor overcooling of the engine will cause white smoke is the fan engaged and running all the time is it winter time those are situations where overcooling will cause not a full combustion because the cylinders are not hot enough and you'll be blowing white smoke out of the exhaust cracked injector cups even though you might not see fuel sitting in your water bottle it could be cracked at the point where it's just leaking down into the cylinder through the injector cups and of course anytime you get coolant going into your cylinders it's going to have white smoke and you should be able to smell it you know don't go up to your exhaust directly and go you know right at the exhaust and smell it but you will smell a sweet smell coming from the exhaust with that white smoke. That'd be an indication right away that you've got a coolant issue and it more than likely is an injector cup. Now just a real quick tip here and we'll be showing this in depth in a future video when we get to heads. When you're installing brand new injector cups it's really critical, number one, that sand with like 320, 400 grit or with uh, a scotch bright, the outside of the cup up on top, get it nice and scuffed up really nice. Get the bottom of the cup where you're going to be putting the sealant uh, also. Get that nicely scuffed up real well. Don't leave it all shiny and everything and then push it down into place. Get those two areas where your sleeve sealer is going to make contact with the head and make sure that those areas are nice and clean, nice and scuffed up, not, not inside the head itself, just a cup so it has something to grab. That right there will eliminate problems on down the road uh, it'll eliminate problems right away uh, a lot of times I get uh, emails comments telephones hey just replace my injector cups why do I got white smoke well sometimes you didn't put enough sealant on there or you didn't scuff up those two areas that I previously discussed you put the cup in crooked you put the injector back in without the brass piece at the end of the injector and it is causing it to fuel extra fuel and or leak what you just tried to prevent into the cylinder with your coolant. So that's a quick tip right there. How can we find out if we've got an injector cup problem that's leaking down into the cylinder? Whether it's on the radiator or on the newer models where you've got the water bottle, 
go get yourself a pressure tester for the radiator and pump it up with 15 to 18 pounds do a drop test leave it sit there if it starts dropping off comes back down into that uh, 5 psi to 0 range somewhere in your cooling system you have a leak that's ended up in the cylinders which don't put out the fact that it could be a cracked head head gasket those are very rare though head gasket cracked head very 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 rare but not impossible but by doing the pressurized test in the radiator or the coolant bottle that'll tell you with the drop-off test that that's your problem right there then it'd be just a matter of going through and figuring out which cylinder it is and we'll get to that so also one area that we do not want to and this is rare again but an item that we don't want to overlook is the oil cooler is radiator fluid coolant fluid getting into the oil via through a bad oaring in your oil cooler or vice versa and that is getting into the cylinders and then causing the white smoke once again rare don't overlook it though we want to take a look at the sensors uh, map sensor is known to cause white smoke because it's not sending the right information for the turbo and you're gonna get a white smoke situation there or other sensors are throwing off other sensors that are bad causing the computer not to be able to adjust to throw white smoke this is where you want to go and get yourself loaded up with the app of Forescan whether it's Forescan Lite or Forescan Pro and have the OBD reader the Wi-Fi unit that I talk about several times that will be down in the description and you can just go in get yourself set up on that and you can monitor all of your sensors that way uh, and determine if you do have some bad sensors this kind of would be the last thing I would do all right um, usually when you got a white smoke situation the sensors it's, it's so rare to have that situation that I just discussed not impossible last thing you want to look at all right moving on to injectors or fuel causing the white smoke you could have a injector inside the injector itself they have that last spring on the bottom for the fuel these are known over time right at the bottom of the spring to break off that means that that is not closing all the way and leaking inside constantly into that one cylinder with the fuel leaking inside that one cylinder all the time that cylinder is staying cool not getting to the heat that it needs to completely burn it off if it was over fueling in that cylinder and the engine was hot you'd have black smoke but more than likely it's going to cool the cylinder down enough where it's just going to be putting out white smoke the next thing on there is a cracked tip if you have a cracked tip same scenario again it's leaking fuel down in there it's not getting hot enough too much fuel and it's going to be putting out white smoke out of the exhaust you could also be having a solenoid issue where it's not pulling the pop it up to the correct height now I'm sure you've seen the videos or if you haven't there's people out there that have made these shimming kits and I'll get into this again in depth when we get to rebuilding injectors but a couple things to think about here they say pull the solenoid off take your gauge and they give you gauges from anywhere from 0 0.001 up to 0 0.004 the 0 0.004 is the maximum amount that you should be able to slide underneath the poppet and right there if you can't push underneath the pop it has kind of worn out over time they suggest that you take that top part of the injector apart and put these really thin shims in and then put it back together and make sure that you're at 0 
and then they have you shim the solenoid on top of that. Okay, this makes no sense whatsoever. There's a lot of people that say, hey, geez, I tried this and I couldn't even get the truck started. If you're going to go down this road, first off, if you're at the point where if you can't get a .002 or .001 underneath the poppet pull-up, it's shot. You just need new injectors. But if you're going to go down the road of shimming it up, only shim it up to .003 and put the solenoid back on. If the factory says that from the factory the highest setting is .004, why the heck would you raise the solenoid up further, pulling the poppet out further, and causing it to come past the O-rings that are inside of that injector, which will cause it to sit off to the side and run sideways, and then you'll end up in a worse situation than you were before. Once again, I'll cover this very in-depth when we get to injector rebuilding. So how can we determine if it's an injector? If you've been with the 7.3 for a long time, you've seen all kinds of videos. I'm going to tell you right now how to determine if you got a bad injector that is smoking. Take the valve covers off. Turn the truck on. Get it warmed up. She's smoking out the back. One by one, Disconnect an injector, wait 20 seconds, plug it back in, see if the smoke stops. Once the smoke stops, you know you have the right cylinder, you know which injector needs to be repaired, bingo, you've got it. You don't have to sit there and wonder, don't have to sit there on forums trying to figure out this, that, or the other thing. You don't have to be wasting an hour, two hours going through YouTube videos. It's just as simple as that. Once you pull off that connector to the injector, wait that 20 seconds. If that injector is the issue, that's the one that's cracked. That's the one with the broken spring or whatever the case may be. Just with the injector, it will stop smoking. Obviously, it's going to run for, but it will stop smoking. You found your problem. Connect it back in. Do your repair as you need necessary. Moving on to oil. If oil is getting into the cylinder, highest percentage of the time, it's because the turbo seal is shot. And the second way of doing it is... If the turbo is not shot and it's an oil issue, just by looking through your wheel wells or looking through up on top at your exhaust manifolds, somewhere down along the line you should start seeing a wet area on one of the output ports. And that's gonna, now you've got some real serious problems, all right? If you got oil on one of those outputs at the manifold, You've got a situation where you've got a cracked piston that's coming around. You've got broken uh, rings. You've got scored cylinders, messed up cylinders, bad valve, bad valve seating, bad cam, bad lifter. All of these are a very rare situation on a 7.3 because they are built like the toughest tank in the entire world but still do not rule it out. So that's how you would determine and obviously you know whatever cylinder has got the oil uh, you know on the manifold and on the block right there where the seal is the oils coming out there well you found out what cylinder is and basically you're in a situation where you're gonna have to pull the head off and start getting deep down inside to determine what the issue is. Now, other things that I have seen causing white smoke is performance off balance. Some people go and they feel that if I put the biggest turbo on my truck, it's going to give me all kinds of power. True. But if you don't upgrade your air intake and you don't upgrade the exhaust going out, you're causing a situation where you're causing all this pressure inside the motor 
and you've got an air to fuel off balance. It's going to be doing all this sucking, and I have seen in two cases <laughs> where the cheap Fram air filters actually got sucked, literally sucked inside the inlet tube to the turbo. You know, not the whole filter, but close to 30 40 percent of the filter would made its way in to the air intake quite impressive that's sucking a lot of air but either which way be careful of your performance upgrade decisions if you're gonna go put a larger turbo on spend the money right then and there or save up till you can and get yourself the larger air intake as well if you're going to put a massive turbo on the factory air system is not designed to suck that much air it's just going to cause issues you need to upgrade your air intake to a much larger filter a much larger pipe which is usually included with the turbo by the way but that all has to be upgraded and of course you've got the old suck boom blow as she's blowing she needs room to blow so you need a larger exhaust pipe also depending on the size of the upgrades that you're doing of course but anyways i hope you've learned something today and you take it easy and you have a good day you're still here yet it's over oh i know Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Hit the little bell, you know the little bell. Doesn't cost you anything. And you'll be notified every time I put out a brand new video. This is a variety channel, so choose the stuff that you want to view and the stuff that you don't, well, don't watch it. Until then, go home, take it easy. Have a good weekend. Get out of here.